I'm Matt Kroll from Montford in Iowa. I'm a former Iowa Hawkeye football player and a current farmer. This is for you. This is the farm with the greenhouses. This is where they sell their plants. I grew up on the farm about five minutes away from town. So, you know, when I would uh, go hang out with my friends in town, you know, we would have a good time there, but still had the disconnect of working on the farm and uh, growing up in, in a small town, but a vibrant small town that has a, uh, has a Cornell College, has a community college in there, a nice college. So it's, it seems bigger than it is, but you still get that small town feel and a, and a cool uptown to, uh, to venture into. This is the call farm on Sunday morning. We have two drivers. Everywhere. So it actually started, uh, my grandmother's last name is Wolf, and that family settled here uh, mid-1860s, 1850s. Um, so technically been in the, that family and our family since then, so uh, since the mid-1860s. Um, and then it became into the Kroll name uh, mid-1950s, 1956. Uh, my grandfather obviously married uh, my grandmother Elizabeth Wolf. Um, and Howard was his name, so it's been in the Kroll name since uh, the mid-1950s. When October and November get here and it's Big Ten football in the upper Midwest, you better be able to run the football. Those aren't my words. They belong to Coach Kirk Ferentz. That's the backdrop we have today from the big house at Michigan as Iowa rolls into Ann Arbor to face the Wolverines. Time to get to work. Let's go. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Dolphin with Eddie Podolak. Good morning and welcome to Big Ten Football and the race for a divisional title. Either way, we're pretty hard, pretty together and have fun. All right, follow me to where we're going. Speed on three. One, two, three. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Every play, all right, hard as we can go, mentally tough, and team football. Those three things. Compete, mentally tough, all right, team football, every play. Let's go. go, there, go. One running back is Makai Sargent. Now they have a fullback, Ross, and they're winged out. Ball's fumbled on the first play from scrimmage. And I don't think Makai Sargent's knee was down. Iowa's turned it over on the first play from scrimmage. Couldn't start any worse for Iowa. Oh, I just can't. He's had no problems hanging on to the football. Patterson to throw on third. Third down and four. And a an underneath route, he has to go to a safety valve for actual loss of yards. And they're going for the field goal. Iowa trails just a couple minutes deep in the game. Here's the fake draw handoff. Pocket closes. He steps up, fires downfield, and it is caught. Great catch. Deep in Iowa territory at the 20. One-on-one -on -one coverage with D.J. Johnson. Hawks need to hold here. Second down goal. Handoff again to Charbonnet. Same play. He's over the goal line. Touchdown. Boy, that Michigan offensive line is controlling the tempo right now. Second down and five. 45-yard line of Michigan. Back to pass as Patterson throws to the sideline. Picked off. Intercepted. Geno Stone bird-dogging that pass. Outstanding zone coverage. The Hawks get the ball right back at the 41-yard line. His first pick of the year. Couldn't have come at a more opportunity. Oh, time. that's a big play, and they tricked Patterson. They came into zone, put the safety in front of the quarterback, and he thought he had the quarterback wide open, and Stone just perfect timing. Weeding the tight end, wings left. Ball in the near hash. Stanley to pass. Lobs it to the far sideline into double coverage, and it's intercepted by Michigan. What is going on? Here's Patterson. Gives it to Charbonnet, and he's dropped in the backfield. Heck of a play coming by Golston. Fired across the line of scrimmage and gets the sack of the tailback. Yeah, there's a local guy, Detroit, Michigan product, and he just beat that tackle. Third down and almost seven. Hawks need a first down in the worst way. 
Stanley to throw, hit as he throws, caught by Regini. He ran across the formation, turned upfield. Stanley in the gun, the ball right at midfield, Iowa trailing 10-0. Stanley back to pass, looks left, throws right, caught, first down, Tyler Goodson squirms to the 35 of the Michigan Wolverines, and the Hawks are on the move. Hawks want to get some points out of this drive. They're sending everybody, Stanley throws it to the underneath man, Goodson, he's got room inside the 25 to the 24, that'll be another first down, that's back-to-back, blitzes by Michigan that cost him, and passes to Goodson, let's get on the scoreboard. Keith Duncan, 10 of 11 on the year. This is a chip shot, almost a point after try, and it's right through. 10-3, Michigan's lead cut to a touchdown, so the Hawks get something after a 64-yard drive that used six and a half minutes. Third down and long, third and nine. Here's the pitch to Charbonnet. They got that outside wing open for a minute. Oh, what a play. Play. I say it was open for a brief second because Geno Stone came from nowhere and dropped him for a three-yard gain when it looked like he might run for a first down. He had three, three blockers in front of him, and Geno Stone just rocketed right between them all, got his head in front of him. Stanley's in the gun back at his own three, ball at the eight-yard line. Here's the snap. He's looking for somebody on the near sideline. Fires it deep to Brandon Got Smith. Caught oh, on a great catch. Back shoulder throw by Stanley across the 40. Hill had great coverage. The cornerback, Lavert Hill, he landed hard on his right shoulder. And a lot of that had to do with the size of Brandon Smith with those glue-like huge hands. Patterson in the gun, a play fake on the draw. Now he's hit from behind by A.J. Epinesa. Well, that's their best offensive lineman, and he couldn't block Epinesa, who came around the corner. There'll be a lot of talk in that locker room about cleaning up the mistakes and getting focused for what should be a terrific second half. The Heartland is brought to you by Mediacom. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme. Feel the power of amazingly fast internet up to one gig. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. When we are playing to our abilities, doing the things we're capable of doing, we're moving the ball okay, right up and down the field. So what we need to do is take care of us. That's what's important right now. That's as bad as you can play for two quarters. So what? We're right in the game. Shotgun snap. He takes a deep drop. They blitz. They set up the screen to Makai Sargent. He's got room. 45-50. First down. 43-yard line of Michigan. Great call. Great execution on third and long. Iowa has been unbelievable on third and long today. Fantastic call. Tremendous execution. Hawks are going for it. Here's Stanley. Good protection. Throws it over the middle. Incomplete. And then tipped and intercepted. Michigan ball at the 30-yard line. 30-yard line of Michigan. First and 10, 33-yard line of Michigan. Here's Peoples-Jones. He's going to pull up and throw the pass. And a huge loss back to the 23. <laughs> now here's Patterson sack by A.J. Epinesa. And I think John C. Golston. <laughs> Here's a deflected pass. It's caught by Amir Smith, and he's down to the Michigan 38-yard line. Another deflected Nate Stanley pass, but this time it went Iowa's way. It's unbelievable because that ball was, he was wide open, and a linebacker jumped up and tipped it. 35-yard line of Michigan, Iowa trailing 10-3. Blitz coming again. Stanley steps up in the pocket, but has to eat the football. Goodson and Regani are the slot receivers. Snap. Here comes that linebacker. They air it out to the sideline. Caught by Goodson on a fade pattern. Inside. What a player. Inside the Michigan 30 at the 24-yard line. That is a freshman tailback that just won a fade pattern on one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Here they come again. That. Stanley's going to be sacked for an eighth time. Here they come. The pocket closes. Stanley running for his life. Can't get rid of the ball, tries to left-hand it, completes it to Goodson at the 40 of Iowa. He's back to midfield and then stacked up at the Michigan 45. So they're going to lose a yard or two on that play. But 
Patterson takes the knee. The final score will be Michigan 10 and the Hawkeyes 3. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa Corn. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. So altogether we run about 1,200 acres of ground, so we either rent or own that. Um, half of that's split um, between row crop acres and hay acres, and the other half is pasture timbers. So kind of our philosophy is uh, kind of maximize every piece that we can. So we do all, all sorts of things, uh, if you want to call them niche markets. Um, we start out in the spring, we have five greenhouses dedicated to flowers, annuals, and perennials. In the summer, we're doing about 15 years, we grow you know, any vegetable A to Z, um, any produce, sweet corn's kind of our main component in the summer. We run a CSA program, so we deliver uh, boxes of fresh vegetables and produce to people's doors in the surrounding area, 20 minute area. Um, and then kind of our biggest uh, season is what we're jumping into now in the fall, um, is the pumpkin season. So any given weekend, we have a few thousand people out here, probably sell, you know, 20 to 25,000 pumpkins a year. Um, off the place and also two area high V's, fairways and other establishments and then in the winter we uh, we cut firewood year round so um, sell firewood we sell some rough cut lumber as you can see in the background here um, so all that and then on top of that we're on 150 head of stock cows so cow calf um, beef cows um, and then just have some chickens some other random animals and then uh, normal row crop about 300 acres of corn and soybeans as well so long answer but uh, that's kind of all we do all we do here and that's kind of our life cycle a yearly life cycle what we do Three are stacked up in the backfield mitch king and matt cole working their two tandem magic again love the culture and loved uh coach parents love coach morgan um who recently retired and to this day have a great relationship with uh, coach morgan um but yeah i didn't see a better place you know being this close to the farm i could still get you know parents can come any saturday to watch uh, play play games and uh, you know like I said there wasn't a better I felt a better place uh, that way from proximity but the culture that they were starting and beginning um, you can kind of sense it turning in those in those uh, early years. Matt was extremely serious about whatever he deemed to be important and uh, academically he was a really good student uh, you know just a character person high character person and you know great friend great teammate and then on the field, he was, he was all business, whether it be his training uh, in the weight room, uh, the way he did things uh, to get ready for the season, and then certainly the way he practiced and the way he competed on the field. And he's not a look at me type guy at all. He was just, he's, he's perfect, the uh, perfect interior player. You know, I had the opportunity, was uh, signed as a free agent to New York Jets. Um, so once again, small town kid growing up on a farm, you know, first thing you hear, New York City, um, you know, once again, blessed to have that opportunity to go out there and uh, was with them for three years and uh, four camps. So Coach Ryan, Rex Ryan was the first time head coach there. So playing there and uh, having his atmosphere and him as a coach was a, was a cool opportunity and a, a neat thing to, to not only obviously play in the NFL, dream come true, but, uh, you know, see a different part of the country and experience uh, New York City and New Jersey and everything that it had to offer. I think any, uh, football players, you know, that has a chance to play in the league, uh, you know, you want to make it a 10 year, 10 plus year uh, career, but that uh, obviously doesn't happen a lot of times. So, you know, I think the back of my mind, you know, obviously uh, farming and what we had going on here, it was only the back of my mind, obviously you want to play forever and uh, farm is more of a hobby, but uh, obviously that didn't happen. So to make a living and to be back on the farm is, is really cool and to kind of take this family farm hopefully in new places and uh, continue to grow what was already here. You know, obviously there, there's different opportunities, I think, and, and playing at Iowa, you, you have a good network of people. And so there's definitely different opportunities as far as from a professional standpoint to, uh, to take on. But I feel like, you know, part of a competitive side, uh, you know, coming back and seeing what I can create and be my own boss and, you know, essentially managing this place with my dad um, was a challenge. So I think uh, farming and egg and, Everything that uh, agriculture encompasses as far as bad on weather, battling national markets, um, stigmas per se, um, 
you know, hopefully give agriculture a face that uh, can move us forward and hopefully inspire, you know, my generation, a new generation to take on farming. Yeah, it's not awesome every day. It's not great. You get dirty. You're fighting, you know, it feels like uphill battle sometimes. But I think, uh, you know, if, if I can show that hopefully you can be successful um, and bring some sort of face to egg, um, I definitely love to do that. The Heartland is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Hawkeye football is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Avoid breakdowns in coverage with U.S. Cellular. Ivy, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Ivy proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think first and foremost, you got to talk about you know, just the, the you know, personnel that they had on defense. Um, you know, Michigan's always been known for, for big, fast guys. So, um, you know, and this year was no different. Um, they did a great job at, at bringing different blitzes and, and making it really tough on our offensive line. Um, so, you know, I think, uh, you know, a combination of their, of their front four guys and then, uh, you know, maybe just holding onto the ball a little bit too long, uh, you know, push us out of field goal range a couple times. I think the defense uh, came in and performed pretty good. But um, a lot of that doesn't really matter if you don't get the win. So just uh, playing off how the offense play, we need to play a little better just to get the win. So, you know, it's a team game. So we're going to try to be even better next week. I think they're, uh, you know, very similar with the type of athletes that they have. Uh, you know, when they, you compare them to Michigan, uh, you know, they're big, long, fast guys. Uh, you know, they pose a lot of problems with just their personnel. Um, you know, they do a lot of things on defense as far as disguising coverages and blitzes, which, which makes it tough. Um, you know, on quarterbacks and and in in the past game, um, you know, so that's one of the things that they do really well to, uh, you know, kind of confuse the offense. Yeah, Penn State they bring a read option, and um, so you know, RPO they can either run it and pass it in the same play, and um, number one is really explosive for them. So they have a lot of fast guys across the board, and it's going to be tough, but it's going to be a good challenge to shut that down. Sometimes after a win, you know. You can get a little softer, you know, but after a loss, it definitely brings the hunger out the team, you know, especially with the game of this caliber. You know, we're, we really, we're going to hit the practice really hard so we can put our best foot forward this week. After a loss, uh, you know, you always want to get that taste out of your mouth. So we're just looking forward to, uh, you know, taking what we learned from, from watching the tape and applying it to practice this week and then get out on the field. Uh, you know, it's going to be a great environment. Um, you know, really just excited to get out and, and have another opportunity to prove ourselves against a it's a Big Ten opponent.